Ah, yes, look at that. That's right. It's Lindy Sports Annual College Football Magazine. It comes out once a year. It's one of the two Bibles of preseason college football magazines that I get every year. Although I may not be getting Athens this year because they went up exponentially on their price. Now, this magazine here has just as much content and just as much interesting content as Athens, and yet they kept their price about the same at eleven ninety nine. Meanwhile, Athens went up to a, a whopping seventeen ninety nine. And with state tax here in Alabama, that's twenty dollars for just one magazine. But today we're going to jump into these preseason magazines. It's one magazine that I got here, and we're going to go over who they think is going to end up being in the top 25. Let's talk about it. Here we come once again, riding on in. It's the Outlaw Posse, now in effect. And today's Four Horsemen shout-outs go to Zach Hamner, J.D. Wilmoth, Billy Townsend, and Kuz's Corner. Great channel, by the way. Check it out for some great conference realignment talk and whatnot. Also, I can be found on Twitter at OCF Productions. And if you want to get your badge and get deputized and get a random four horsemen shout out like those guys just did, as well as possibly the comment of the day, which is coming later in the show, is just a join button over by the subscribe button. It's just $2.99 a month. That's just 75 cents a week. That's just a half a bottle of water for the outlaw. You get your badge and you'll be deputized. Also, do the big four for me. Like, share, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Those are the big four, and they're all free now. Getting right to it here. Huh. The college football magazines are finally out. And when they start coming out, boy, you can start really tasting it. Man, I'm just getting all giddy just talking about it. Is Athlans and Lindy's, who I mentioned earlier, um, to me have always been the two Bibles of college football preseason magazines. Although this year, I'm not sure if I'll buy that Athlans, like I said before. But what we're going to go over today is the top 25 predictions by Lindy's. We're going to pull that up for you guys and gals right now. Let's start from the bottom down here with number 25. I'm going to read the R call segment of each one of these teams that they have prognosed to be in the top 25 at the end of the year. R call on the Liberty Flames at number 25. Liberty hit the lottery when it was able to keep Salter away from a couple of major programs in the hunt. He'll be a Heisman candidate if they can stay undefeated against far and away the most favorable schedule of any nationally ranked squad. Number 24 is Iowa State. The Iowa State Cyclones, it says our call, Iowa State is often one of the most underrated, overlooked, underappreciated, question mark. Yeah, because, I mean, they hadn't really been doing much here as of late. But the Cyclones are back on the radar as an up-and-coming again. The miserable 4-8 campaign in 2022 was a one-year blip. The Cyclones should get back to contending at a 2020 level. If Sama grows as a down-to-down -down runner, Iowa State could win the Big 12. Well, now. Number 23, the Arizona Wildcats. They say, our call. Stunning to think that this program was on a 20-game losing streak late in the 2021 season. New coach Brent Brennan won't squander this momentum of the current seven-game winning streak. Number 22, the NC State Wolfpack. And they say on the our call in his 12th season, Doran has restocked talent on both sides of the ball, putting this team in position to win 10 or more and reach its first ever ACC championship game. The schedule is favorable to no Miami or Florida State. 
Coming in at number 21 is those Kansas State Wildcats. They say of Kansas State, there's a lot of unknowables in the Big 12, but K-State hosting Oklahoma State before the end of September should tell us one of them. This team is a fine bet to reach the conference title game. Why ain't they higher than 21st? (laughs) Coming in at number 20 is the Kansas Jayhawks. They say of Kansas, retaining talent is one of the top markers of a strong team culture. And KU has it in spades. Leopold is building something special in Lawrence, and the 24 Jayhawks look like the best team yet. If Daniel stays healthy, Kansas is a top 25 squad chasing a spot in the Big 12 title game. Though what would be a November through what would be a November joyride. Now, coming in at number 19, it is those Texas A&M Aggies from College Station. At number 19, they say of Texas A&M, there's a good chance the Aggies will be ahead of schedule under Elko, given his early success over a short tenure at Duke with considerably less talent. Time will tell if he was one of the this coaching cycle's best hires, but his recruiting prowess in the portal suggests that even in his first season, Texas A&M has never left the win now mode. So, high hopes for Mike Elko. I think they may be a little overrated. Number 18, those Oklahoma Sooners. Boomer Sooner comes in at number 18, and their call on the Sooners is this. The Sooners should take the what doesn't kill you makes you stronger mantra and to heart during their first season in the SEC. This team is clearly one of the best 15 to 20 teams in the country, but could endure a substantial headache just trying to remain ranked in the top 25 because they did have one of the toughest schedules. That's another topic within this book that uh, Oklahoma was ranked in. Coming in at number 17, those Miami Hurricanes. Their call on Miami is, that's the sound of rubber meeting the road. One of the nation's highest paid coaches is 12 to 13 overall with the Hurricanes, who have won just 6 of 16 in the ACC. Considering the cash being spent in Coral Gables to fill one of the ACC's better rosters and coaching staffs, the payoff needs to start coming sooner rather than later. So maybe they're suggesting that he is on the hot seat. What do y'all think? Coming in at number 16 is the Utah Running Utes. It says here, of Utah, despite the personnel losses, the return of rising, cam rising that is, and tied in Brant Cooth means the pieces line up for the Utes to return to return or to contend for their first college football playoff trip, if they can stay healthy, of course. Coming in at number 15 is the Tennessee Volunteers. In their call on Tennessee, they say spring was relatively quiet at Tennessee, which is exactly how things were ahead of the 2022 campaign before the Vows erupted into a late-season playoff threat. If the defense comes together and Amaleva emerges as anticipated, this squad has a similar makeup, I guess they're saying, to make a similar run. Coming in at number 14, those Clemson Tigers trying to get back to respectability and get back to being national championship contenders. Uh, Doesn't look like they're quite there, according to Athens. They're not in the top 12. But it says here of Clemson, tossing the Tigers into the second tier of playoff contenders might be underselling, given their previous success under Sweeney, four title games to Two fattest rings, is that what they're trying to say? But the program is struggling to remain a perennial threat. But I think the Clemson will be back this year. I think they'll be a lot better this year, and I think they will get in the top 12. Number 13, those LSU Fighting Tigers from the Bayou Country. Coming in at number 13, their call on LSU is 
If LSU's defense is approved, this team will have a say in how the SEC settles out. Three of the Tigers' toughest matchups come at home, Ole Miss, Alabama, and Oklahoma. And the season opener against USC is an opportunity to gain early momentum. Coming in number 12 is the Oklahoma State. Oh, okie pokey choky State. Coming in number 12, they're saying that Oklahoma State might just make the playoffs this year. I'm a man. I'm 53. I'm a man. I choke in the big games. Might finally make the playoffs. Their call on Oklahoma State entering as the favorite is not a common role for the Cowboys, but they have more stability than almost any program and know who they are. We'll find out quickly what's what. Oklahoma State opens Big 12 play with conference contenders Utah and K-State. Handle business and everything is on the table for Okie Poke State. Number 11, Penn State Nittany Lions. Of Penn State, they say, yes, the Big Ten has become a whole lot more challenging, and Ohio Stank is the clear favorite, but the Nittany Lions look equipped to make a push for the postseason. This could be the second best team in the Big Ten. With the right breaks and development, it could be even better. Because, you know, Michigan did lose a lot. Coming in at number 10, those Florida State fake Indians down there in the TPs of Tallahassee. They're going to make the top 10 according to Lindy's. Their call says it's not even arguable. The playoff selection committee shafted Florida Stank. Oops, I call them Florida Stank. Last year, and while there aren't many holdovers from that 13-win season, the disdain remains thick. That's more than enough motivational fuel for this league's still most talented team to make a repeat of an ACC title run. But the Seminoles need DJ Ungalea, late of Clemson and Oregon State with 8,300 yards and 57 touchdown passes, to show himself as a consistent playmaking quarterback. First of all, Lindy's, they didn't get shafted. The four best teams got put in the playoff. As evidenced by the fact that they got the worst ass whipping of all time in any college football game in college football history at 63-3. Yes, I know a little bunch of the players set out, but some of Georgia's players set out too. There's no excuse for getting beat by 60. Number nine, the Missouri Tigers. Oh, Jonathan Lewis and the Sooners won't like that one too much. Of Missouri, they say, by program standards, a nine-win regular season would be another positive step for Drinkowitz and his goal toward making Missouri a preferred destination school in the SEC. However, that could result in missing the playoffs and dealing with something of a rebuild the following season. See what winning does? Repeating heightened success is hard. And Missouri has never really shown that they can do that. They had a few good years back in the early part of the teens, the, the decade of teens, uh, making back-to-back -back SEC title runs. But more than two years in a row is a big ask of the Missouri program as a whole throughout history. So we'll see if they can follow it up this year. Number eight, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish at number eight. Their call on Notre Dame is upgrading a wide out was a priority in the offseason. And the coaching staff landed three players at that position, highlighted by instant impact Clemson standout Bew Collins. Precise work in the portal and notable depth should keep Notre Dame hovering around the top ten throughout the season. Maybe, maybe not. I think Notre Dame may be a little high. But I could be wrong, but to me, I think that's one that they may have gotten wrong. Notre Dame might sneak into the playoffs just because of who they are. It may be 11 or 12, but I don't know if they're a top 10 team. Just saying. Number seven, the Alabama Crimson Tide with their new head coach, Kellen DeBoer, replacing the, the legendary Nick Saban comes in at number seven. And they say of Alabama, repeating as SEC champions is a stretch, but there's enough playmakers for the Crimson Tide to barge their way into the 12-team playoff. How DeBoer handles expectations and overcoming the week-to-week -week grind in the SEC are critical factors. Scoring points and bunches like he did at Washington is no easy feat. And it won't be 
an easy feat in the SEC for him. But the man's won everywhere he's went. It's not like Alabama's bringing in a coach that's not proven. This guy's already been in the national title game. I think that's a that's pr- that's a that's a pretty nice little uh, provable point, right? Number six, the defending. You're defending. Everyone's defending, whether y'all like it or not. You're defending national champions, the Michigan Wolverines. Best fight song in college football, in my opinion. Y'all drop it in the comment section. Tell me who y'all's best fight song is and you can't say your own team. Our call is probably asking too much to replicate the magic of 2023 when the Wolverines won their third Big Ten championship in a row. 13 players were drafted. That's a lot of change, but Michigan has enough to push for a spot in the expanded playoffs. One, they just they lost 13 players. They lost Jim Harbaugh, and they lost their defensive coordinator. So you have to speed there, ladies, on that on that little bit. Coming in at number five, this was a big surprise to me. Although Ole Miss is a pretty highly regarded team, to be in the top five to me was a little bit high for Ole Miss because – uh, like a lot of people said, Lane Kiffin's won a lot of games, but he hasn't really beat any top-ranked teams, teams that were ranked, you know, ahead of him by quite a bit. He hasn't really proved himself against top-10 competition yet. But according to Lindy's here, he's going to finally prove himself this year and get Ole Miss into the top five. And their call on Ole Miss is the Rebels will reach the playoff if they take advantage of a soft slate by SEC standards. There's no Alabama or Texas, and avoid the – pitfalls of looking ahead. Another 10-win season should put Ole Miss at the center of the selection committee's final conversation in December. I agree that Ole Miss is a playoff team. I'm just not sure they're top five. I don't know if I buy that just quite yet because they haven't proven it yet. At number four, the Oregon Ducks come in quacking away. At number four, they say of Oregon, Dan Lanning's squad has all the pieces to reach the playoffs for the first time since 2014. After falling short, falling near losses to rivals the past two Novembers, the core of this year's squad is motivated, and the incoming transfers will bring even more grit now to show they can win when it matters most. And uh, Lanning's only been there two years, so. I think uh, a little more patience would probably be in order here, Lindy. So just my, just, just say. At number three, those Texas long turds coming in. Number three, their call on Texas is games against Michigan, Georgia, Oklahoma, and Texas A&M will be telling. But the Longhorns are built to sustain body blows despite the schedule. Although reaching the playoffs is the first goal of any top team, Given the strengths on the roster, roster, these guys are going to make a run at the SEC championship, according to Lindy's. All right. Number two, the Ohio Stank Buck Nuts coming in. Number two, our call. The NFL draft in April marked Ohio Stank's smallest draft class, only four players, in more than a decade. And that was cause for celebration. The guy stayed and fueled by transfers like Caleb Downs, Seth McLaughlin, and running back Keyshawn Ludkins. This team is loaded. Uh, word of caution to Ohio State. And I ain't saying it's because he left my team, but Seth McLaughlin, um, the laugh that Laughlin in the middle of his name, last name there, uh, should be an indication of what you should expect as far as him being able to hike the ball to your quarterback. Because he sucks. Number one, there it is. Those Georgia hedge pissers coming in. Number one, they're predicting that Georgia will win a third national title in four years, which you could start really talking about dynasty status at that point, in my opinion, if Georgia were able to pull that off this year. Of Georgia, they say, the return of quarterback Carson Beck and the arrival of wide out London Humphreys from Vanderbilt to assist in replacing Lad McConkey. Check vital personnel boxes. Still, the schedule ain't nothing to call at. With Clemson, Alabama, Auburn, and Texas in the first half of the season alone. Then they end the season with Florida, Ole Miss, and Tennessee 
in successive, successive November weeks. Only a team this deep and talented could cope with that. Now, while they are deep and talented, to me, that's a hell of a schedule. They didn't really do Georgia any favors. You would think they would do Georgia some favors since they won two out of the last three national championships. You'd think they'd be a little nicer to Georgia instead of being all nicey-nicey and, and ass-kissy to those Texas long terms. So uh, SEC, get your shit together and uh, quit uh, placating to Texas. That's all I'm going to say. And the comment of the day goes to Texas Torpedo 01 says, once a SEC Dodger, always a SEC Dodger. Boomer, short, sweet, and to the point. I like it. <laughs> and that's in regards to the last podcast about Lincoln Riley, oh, stinky Linky, TBOW, the bitch out west, trying to avoid playing LSU. And it looks like he's trying to avoid the SEC altogether. Now, if you guys and gals don't mind, there's a little hard option down here at the bottom of this screen. If you might want to make a one-time donation to the program, smash that, throw a few dollars in the coffers. Also, you can get your badge and get deputized, as I said earlier. It's not but $2.99 a month. That's just 75 cents a week. You get your badge and get deputized. Possibly be a random full horseman shout-out, as well as possibly be the comment of the day, like Texas Torpedo 01 just was. And also, the Big Four, which are all free. Like, share, comment, and subscribe to this channel. And with that, I'm out of here. KMCA to all the other teams. Class is now officially dismissed.